Yes, people, what's going on? Welcome to Stretford Paddock. I am Adam McCola. So, on the 21st of May 2022, Manchester United legends will be taking on Liverpool legends at Old Trafford. They will hopefully be raising up to £1 million for the Manchester United Foundation. And the Manchester United Foundation, we've done work with them before. You've seen videos that we've done with them before on the channel as well. They raise money and do great work in and around the greater Manchester area. Now, today we get to speak to one of those players that will be playing in the game between Manchester United legends and Liverpool legends. Yes, he's won a Premier League, he's won an FA Cup, multiple Pachichi trophies, two European Golden Boots. He even shared a World Cup Golden Boot as well. He's a Manchester United cult hero. He came from Uruguay. He made the Scousers cry. He is Diego Forlan. Diego, welcome to the channel. Great to be speaking to you. Um, you're a Manchester United cult hero. You'll be coming back to Old Trafford uh, to take on Liverpool. How does that make you feel knowing that you'll be able to play at Old Trafford again? Well, very exciting. You know, for me, it's going to be the first time since I left, you know, to go back to Old Trafford and also to be back, uh, uh, not in Manchester, but yes, we, with the team. So, you know, I'm really excited to, to come back again. Um, when you played at Old Trafford, what do you remember most about the stadium? Um, obviously, you, you're a cult hero and we still sing your name to this day. Um, you know the song. Of course, you know the song. Um, <laughs> but like, what is it about Old Trafford that, that is special for you? I think it's one of the best stadiums in the world. You know, I always say, say to the people here, you know, you know, you're why everybody loves football, uh, you know, France and Everybody's asking which stadium do you like more, and I said, you know, there are many stages uh, a lot, and and I always surprised about Old Trafford. You know, when you come to the stadium, you see it's like a box, and then you get into the stadium, and you say, you see how big is the stadium? It's it's unbelievable. You know, you see the end, you don't see the end of, of the of the stands, and and now and, and and I'm talking about 2004, since you know, which was big. Now it's much bigger. So for me, it's going to be uh, surprising, you know, to see uh, the stadium, how it, it, it is now, which is going to be totally different than it was before. But, uh, and uh, they, they always, you know, it, it, didn't, it didn't matter which game against whom we were going to play, that the stadium was always full capacity. So that was uh, always the fans behind the people and it was unbelievable. I mean, when you look at some of the players that will be playing with you, um, a few other players that have scored against Liverpool, Sylvester, uh, John O'Shea, Patrice Evra will be there as well. Um, I'm sure there'll be huge numbers there to see you guys and support the foundation too. Um, playing against Liverpool though, when you were coming up to them in your playing career, they would have been big games. What was Sir Alex Ferguson like and what was the feeling like in the build-up to those games against Liverpool? Well, yeah, there was. it was always... Uh... Everybody was looking up these kind of games, you know, against Liverpool, Arsenal. Uh, every time we had that opportunity, and of, of course, you know, playing against Liverpool was much better. Uh, but yeah, uh, it was not different because it would have been, you know, a, a, a good professional way to say because you you need to build up the, the games. It doesn't matter who you were playing against. The same way. Uh, Every game and is the way you need to respect every team. It doesn't matter if they are not Liverpool or maybe other mm. teams. So, uh, and these kind of things, you know, the, the way we were approaching all the games were were the same every time. Mm. It was a remarkable team, and we, we were obviously always competing for those trophies. Now, obviously, at the start of your United career, things didn't quite go to plan early on, in, especially in the goal department. But you definitely adhered yourself to the fans with your work rate. If there was a United player that was maybe going through a similar time where things weren't going to plan, what advice would you give to them um, playing for Manchester United and kind of having that opportunity in front of them? No, oh, yeah, of course. Uh, with, it's, it's like in life, you know, when things doesn't go the way you think or if you try to do it, you need to work hard. It's, it's, it's no, uh, that's the only thing you need to do, you know, for me, 
there was no that uh, there was no excuse you know i was you know trying to do my best i i, I was not scoring goals so, although I, I was not playing so many games like everybody was saying you know i was always coming 10 15 minutes and, and they were saying that for one game and i only yeah. just play five minutes but uh, it didn't matter to me you know I, I wanted to score because I always wanted to score since I since I was a kid I, I always enjoyed and I was really happy every time I, I had the opportunity to score a goal so when I had the opportunity to arrive to a big club I wanted to perform well I wanted to to see for myself if I, if I was able to play for the club and, and, and to fulfill the uh, all the hope that the the manager had in me when when he had since he, when he signed me, so I wanted to do it well. And when I was scoring, I was working much harder because I wanted to to do it well for me to be happy. And then, of course, if I was doing it for me, it was going to be for the team, for the manager, for the club, for the fans, for everybody, you know. But first of all, try to do my best. And and then if I was not scoring goals, yeah, I, I know I was. I could be. In that moment, uh, I could have been a little bit disappointed, but I was really working hard. And and the only you know, the only thing that I can say is that you know you need to work hard. There's nothing in life that that if you don't work hard, uh, it, yeah. it's, it's difficult for you to achieve something. Your first goal eventually it came against Maccabi Haifa in a five-two win um, from the penalty spot. Can you remember that feeling? Because there was also a moment. A little bit earlier, Ronnie, I think it was in a qualifier where uh, you picked up the penalty, you picked up the ball to take a penalty. We were winning, I think, against the Lagazeg. And uh, Roy Keane said, Rude, you go and take it. Like, w- w- did that pressure kind of kind of build up? And how did it feel to eventually get your goal? The thing that nobody knows is that, uh, you know, I, I, I was really calm, but... Uh, that penalty now, if you, <laughs> 20 years after, if you see that uh, when when I think it was Beckham, he was gonna shoot the penalty, and he gave the ball to me uh, and said, "Diego, you have to do it. you have you you will have to do it." I, I don't remember what Beckham or not. I, I, I don't think if David was on the bench. I don't remember now, but I remember who gave me the ball, and I and I was quite calm, but like, but. What nobody knows is that I needed to score the goal, but not not all the penalties they are goal. You know, you can <laughs> miss those penalties. You know, but everybody in the stadium, everybody on the TV was saying, "Okay, he has the opportunity to score a goal. He's gonna be on a penalty spot," and everybody's thinking, "Okay, he has to score the goal, but I can miss I can miss the target, or the keeper can save it." You know, so. 20 years after I can say that it was a very difficult moment because it's not it was not that easy. It's better to be playing in a build-up and give them the ball to you, you know, in front of the goal and score the goal, which you know everybody was expecting, yeah, he has to score and, and he will do it, than to give someone a penalty because it's gonna be much pressure for the for the player, you yeah. know. One of my memories of you is the goal against Southampton, which it was a beautiful goal, by the way. And then a celebration where your shirt's not coming back on and you've got the base layer stuck on your head and you you try to challenge people probably could have some some referees now would probably give you a second yellow for trying to play with that shirt. <laughs> um, I can, you know i can say that i'm the only player in the world that played just for what 10 seconds 15 seconds <laughs> with that without a shirt i don't try for imagine that in the premier league so you know i had the privilege you know and i can say you know it was unbelievable and and, and it was funny. I remember BT, that was the number nine for Southampton. He got the ball, he was running, and I, I get past him. I, I, I took the ball from him and gave it to Bartes. And I remember the referee came to me and said, OK, you have to go out of the pitch because you're making me, you know, look bad. <laughs> and, and he did it. And, and that's why it came back again, the yellow card, you know, because in that moment there was no yellow card because of that taking the shirt off. So I scored a couple of goals at the end of the game, you know, 
Chelsea against Southampton. Uh, against I remember Aston Villa as well the, the week before, and and since then everybody was saying, okay, you know, you need to you, we need to put the yellow card again because uh, if not everybody's going to do the same thing and it's going to be a problem. And then afterwards, I went in 2010 to play a friendly game against Liverpool at a, an Anfield with Atletico Madrid, and I saw a picture in this in the dressing room with me with the shirt off running and celebrating and there was uh, you know like adver- you know some advertised saying if you take the shirt off you will get a yellow card and uh, but nobody paid anything for me you know the, the the you know the advertising was but nobody says anything to me they use my image <laughs> um it was a great image as well and i mean one that will always remember your song will always be sung by manchester united fans and i'm sure we'll be hearing it loads on the 21st of may 2022 one last question before you go. Um, if you could pick a Manchester United five-a-side team out of the players you played with, who would you pick? Well, I would pick... Uh, um, yeah, Roy King. I would pick uh, Ruud. Paul uh, Scholes. Uh, we're talking about three no, now at the moment. So you got you got two midfielders, a striker. You need a goalkeeper and then any other outfield player. I need a goalkeeper. I can say, well, Martes, which I play with. Uh, and then one more, just one more player. One more. You might want to go defensive, but it's your team. Yeah, Rio. Chuck yourself Rio. in there. Oh, Rio. That is a very, very good team. So we had we had Bartes, Rio, Roy Keane. Rude and who was the other one? Sco- was Skulls? Skulls. That's an amazing team. Diego, can't wait to see you back at Old Trafford uh, on the 21st of May. Remember, you guys, you can get your tickets in the description below and hopefully we'll be seeing you guys there too at Old Trafford. Remember, support the Manchester United Foundation as well. They do loads of great work in and around Greater Manchester area. Um, so make sure you're supporting them. Uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this video, uh, video and this interview with Diego. Thank you for his time. See you later. So there you have it guys, hope you guys enjoyed that little interview with Diego Forlan. Great stuff there now, we'll be seeing more of him at Old Trafford on the 21st of May. Hopefully be seeing some of you guys there as well. And remember support the Manchester United Foundation and the work that they do in and around the community. Thank you again to Diego Forlan, thank you to you guys for watching. All the information on that game is available in the description below. And don't forget to subscribe to Stretford Paddock as well for plenty more Manchester United content. Until next time, I've been Adam McCola. I'm out of here.